Okay. I'll put in some numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six. And maybe I'll number this to number seven oxygen again. I think we already decided there would be five atoms. One, two, three, four, five. So that would be a pentagon. But we know that one of the atoms will be an oxygen. And it's conventional for a five-numbered ring to put the oxygen at the top. For a five-numbered ring, the convention is to put the oxygen at the top. This would be the number seven oxygen. Then we know, and I'll put in these stars here too. This is the carbonyl. So then we have the number two, which is the carbonyl. Three, four, and five. Uh, let's see, attached to the number three, this hydroxy is on the left, so it should be up. The number four, the hydroxy is to the right, so it should be down. Uh, the number five, uh, and where do we put the substituent on the number five? Well, we can't use the, uh, the, the, the rule that right means down, because this hydroxy is in the ring, but remember that for a D sugar, this last substituent should always be pointing up. For a D sugar, the last substituent should be pointing up. So I'll put the number six carbon pointing up. And where do the substituents go on the number two? Well, remember the number two, we're forming a new stereocenter. So on the number two, the substituents can go in either direction. This is the new stereocenter we're making. So here um, it can be, and notice that there's actually two substituents on the number two. That's important to realize. We've got the OH and the number one. So here the hydroxy group is up like a bird, so that's beta. Uh, we already knew it was D. It came from fructose, and this is the five-numbered ring, so F for furanose. Beta D fructofuranose, and this one would be? Alpha D fructofuranose. Good. Incidentally, we, I think we said, what's the relationship between these two? or diastereomers. However, there's a special name for this type of epimer, which is anomers. Did you hear that term in class? Yes. So the alpha and beta form of a ring are called anomers of each other. That's just a, a name specifically for the alpha and beta forms of the same sugar. The alpha and beta forms are called anomers. and enamers are a type of epimer. Now there's another oxygen that could attack the number two here. Who's the other oxygen that could attack the number two? The one, two, three, four, five, six. The oxygen from the CH2OH. How do you know that that would also work? Because it's six, it would form a six-membered ring, which is right. stable. We could also use this oxygen, and then there would be one, two, three, four, five, six-numbered ring. We can form either five or six-numbered rings. So now let's show what we would get if this number six oxygen attacked. Would you prefer to have a six-numbered ring? Both five and six are good, so we would get both. I guess six, six is the most stable, but you can expect to get both five and six-numbered rings. So you'd to draw the products, you'd have to draw all four? Uh, probably, yeah. 
Sorry? They would probably give you some help with that. So now we want to show the product when this oxygen attacks the number two. I've already shown the number two product in here. So yeah, you could get either glucopyranose or glucopyranose. So for those, you have to yeah. draw the five We didn't draw all the possible products there. That's right. Sure. They might just say, draw the furanose or draw the pyranose. But uh, if they said, draw all the possible rings, you'd want to draw both the pyranose and the furanose forms. Uh, they mentioned here that the pyranose is more stable than the furanose for glucose. So it's certainly, in, in real life, you're much more commonly dealing with the pyranose. But uh, you can right. get the furanose. So basically, you'll always get furanose and Furanose, unless it's, I mean, if you get, if you get furanose, you will have a furanose, but right. you can have a furanose without a right. furanose if it's too small. Well, yeah, so actually, like if, it's a if, if, if there was only, if there were fewer atoms here, then there would be different numbers. Right. Uh, for example, I don't know if you've taken biology, you've seen that the structure for, say, ribose, um, that, that's a smaller thing where you just get like the six, the, the five numbered ring. So um, depends on how many carbons there are. We've been dealing with the most common cases, which are six carbons. Okay. But as long as you can have a six numbered ring, you will also get five numbered rings. So that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Now I'm going to add a new label for this oxygen. I'll call this the number eight oxygen. It's helpful to label the oxygen that's participating. We saw we're going to get a six-numbered ring. One of the atoms will be an oxygen, and it's conventional to put the oxygen here. That would be our number eight oxygen. That's attacking our number two, our former carbonyl. That's attacking the number three, number four, number five, and number six. So on the number three, the hydroxy is on the left, which means up. On the number four, uh, the hydroxy is on the right, which means down. On the number five, the hydroxy is on the right, which means down. Now here's something I think that you guys figured out. We don't need to draw any substituents on the number six, because all that's left of the number six are two hydrogens, and we can treat them as two hidden hydrogens. So there really are no extra substituents on the number six. And then on the number two, we know there's two possibilities. Uh, we could draw the beta form. And don't forget the other substituent on the number two, which is the C8, the number one carbon. And then all the green. Very tedious. Trying all these sugars. We could write it like this. So I think it's very helpful to put in a lot of numbers and labels here when we're drawing these, including for the oxygen that's ending up in the ring. Does this match what you guys got? The trickiest thing here is realizing that there's no substituents on the number six carbon. 